Hello everybody and welcome back to another Brawl Machine Battle Report. Today we are bringing you a Retribution of Syra versus Crix. Uh, I myself am piloting Lich Lord Venethrax for this one uh, versus Reed bringing Four Shade. Uh, it was a really interesting battle report. There was lots of uh, crazy stuff going on. Uh, another kind of quick one like last week where there was a lot of very heavy front end action and... Um, it's uh, It was a really exciting game, so I hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll get on with the lists. Alright, so for Crix today, I decided to bring Lich Lord Venethrax in uh, Black Industries. Uh, I really like running Lich Lord Venethrax in Black Industries just because counter charge. Um, he wants to be able to run a lot of Warjax, and Black Industries is kind of meant to do that. So, um, yeah, I like having access to counter charge. Um, I can see an argument for Scourge as well, but I don't really own many good units for that, so I run him here. Um, his spell list is also really, really good. He has Mortality, which is a fantastic just general debuff spell. Um, terminal Velocity is really useful when it's useful, uh, giving you a little bit of extra threat extension and such like that. Uh, Lamentation is just a fantastic spell, especially playing against an opponent like Reed, who really likes to bring a lot of spell slinger uh, style casters, so really useful there. Deadweight, also really good offensive spell that can really cripple something for a turn. And uh, Blood Range is just kind of his default blast thing. Um, his feat is interesting. Um, I find personally Venethrax overall works better against Hordes. Um, but it's still a relatively decent control feat that kind of lets me shut down Warjax for a turn, so that's not too bad. With Venethrax today, I brought a Scarlock Thrall. This was mostly for a Spell Slave on Mortality, as well as just having another solo. I uh, don't really plan on using it for much else. Uh, the Canker Worm, I recently got this jack and I wanted to try it out. Uh, it seems like a really fun model. It's got Armor Piercing, which is a fantastic ability just in general. And then the Replicator Adapt is just really, really fun and can do some wild things. So I thought it would be cool. Uh, with that, I brought Malice, uh, one of my other favorite character jacks in Crix. Uh, Malice is just a better Reaper, and the Reaper is one of my favorite jacks in Crix. So... Uh, with the improvement to Harpoons, where they are just on hit now, not that Malice really had a problem with that in the first place, uh, it's really, really good uh, just being able to drag in a Jack from farther away. Nice little threat extension for my entire army, kind of. Uh, possessions also just kind of randomly useful occasionally. And then the armor buff from Ghost Shield is nice as well. Uh, alongside that, I brought a Slayer. I just wanted to have a second beat stick in here. If I'm running a Jack Heavy list, I want at least a couple Jacks that can just kind of go into a Heavy and consistently table it. Um, so that was kind of the, the reasoning here. And then a Stalker. I absolutely love Stalkers. These things are amazing. Um, they just have so much board presence despite only being a couple POW 12s. Um, they, they really have a huge impact on, on scenario positioning and occasionally they can turn into an assassination or something like that. So uh, great solo hunter, great for brawl. Um, aside from my battle group, I only have two other models here. I didn't bring any units today. I brought the Void Archon. Void Archon's giving me Dark Shroud, which is just going to kind of add more arm debuffs. I really, uh, one thing with this list is uh, nothing really hits much above POW 16, so I'm really relying on those arm debuffs. Uh, that I'm getting from this guy and Mortality. Um, I also have stuff like Entropic Force, so Anti-Tough, which is always good. Another Soul Taker, and this model honestly just does a lot of work as it is. It's got a Spray 10, POW 14, and two POW 13s with Assault. Uh, it's just a really, really good model. And then lastly, I brought a Necrotech. With this many Warjacks, I wanted to have the option to repair them if it was available, and for only one point, doesn't really take up much space in the list. So that is my list here today. Like I said, I'm running it in Black Industries, so I get tons of buffs against range, which is kind of nice. And uh, without further ado, let's get on with it. Uh, so for this battle, I chose to bring uh, Lord Grishold. Um, I really like his uh, Arcane Vortex ability on all of his jacks. Uh, it allows him to negate some of the spells being slung at uh, his forces um, and forces your opponent to really pay attention to that. He's also got a pretty decent melee output with a surprising PS15 um, with freeze on it as well. Uh, his spell list is very flexible, um, which is another reason I like him. Uh, he has Dauntless Resolve, so he can give armor and tough to a warrior model slash unit. Um, he's got Freezing Mist, so he can just uh, spam up a cloud wall to protect his forces. 
He has Ghost Walk, um, which gives them better Pathfinder, uh, Ghostly, so they can go through obstructions and uh, forests and stuff without uh, getting the rough terrain negative. Uh, he has Hand of Ice, which is an armor debuff. Um, Light of Wrath is a defense debuff, as well as removing stealth. And he has Revive to just return his forces to play. His feed is really good. Uh, so it's when an enemy mall without immunity cold destroys or removes from play one or more friendly malls in Grishold's control range. Um, they immediately become stationary for one round. Um, he also gets souls from the models, uh, his friendly models that are killed in his control range, which is really nice for the follow-up turn. I brought Silas with him because I want Grishold to be slinging some spells. Um, so he can allow me to upkeep a spell without spending uh, focus. And he gives additional range to to my uh, magic attacks. Uh, I then brought a demon because I really like his uh, pseudo hellmouth um, gun. Um, it's also got reload one. It's just good at uh, killing enemy infantry. And on top of that, he can hit pretty decently in melee with mechanics buff since he has blessed uh, armor buff from spells won't matter. I then brought a chimera just for some arc nodes and to contest some zones. I brought a Harpy because I really like his Thunderbolt gun. It's range 12, rate of fire 2, pow 13. It's got Thunderbolt on it, and on top of that, it's magical to deal with in court models. I then uh, brought Aelith Beer. Um, he's here to give my, all my Rizzovast models Dying Breath. He can camp a flag, and he also hits pretty hard with his uh, PS12 Weapon Master Sword. Um, I then brought an Arcanist Mechanic to hand out focus and to add the plus two strength to my jacks on melee rolls and then i bought a unit of reso vast defenders so i really like these guys um they have tough um and they have defensive line so if they're base to base they get plus two defense and cannot become knocked down and they will never suffer uh blast damage rolls as long as their base friendly malls are base to base with them um as well as that they have precision strike and they are also weapon masters which can be very useful Crick's turn one. All right, so I uh, I win the roll to go first here, and um, I am pretty much just throwing everything up. The stalker is running its full fourteen. I want to be able to threaten the flag right away. Um, next, I think I move the void arc on here, and I decide to just kind of hug him up against that wall there, just in case something goes flying at him. Not that I'm really worried about him actually being able to die to anything on turn one, but just in case. Um, next, I realize I didn't do the Canker Worms Advanced Deployment, so I do that, and then I just run him up as well. And um, the rest of this turn is pretty much just running things up. Uh, Venethrax is going to be the only model that doesn't run here, so I'll get to him in a second on the screen. But all he's going to do is cast Lamentation and then charge 9 inches up the board. Um, and then lastly, the Slayer is just going to run as well. So everything's really just getting into positioning for the rest of the game. Retribution, turn one. So right here, I'm deciding um, what I want to do with the Rizovas. I debated ghostly on them for a while, uh, but I ended up just deciding to run them up. Because uh, they pretty much got where I wanted to without that buff, and I'd rather save the focus. Um, so I just spread them out to hopefully not get all taken out by a Void Archon Spray. And right here, you can see me placing some in the trench and some just uh, ready to contest the zone. Right here, I'm deciding to do with what to do with my jacks. Um, so I'm looking where the demon wants to go, and I'm just going to move him behind a wall, uh, mainly because I don't want him to be any uh, be getting dragged by malice. So I'm trying to respect that. Uh, and then I'm working out uh, what Gorshade wants to do. So I'm just working out uh, the wall templates. I put up Dauntless Resolve on the um, Rizovast Defenders to give them plus three armor. Uh, they already have tough anyways. And then right here I'm moving up my Arc Node um, just to contest zone and potentially get some useful spell slung out, but mainly as a trading piece. Then right here, I'm figuring out uh, how I can get my Harpy to threat stuff without being in threat range himself. So I'm just going to move him up there with the Rose of Ass. And right here, I'm just going to end my turn by moving uh, Aelithvir behind the wall. Crick's 
Crick's turn two. All right, so this is going to be an order of activation heavy turn here. Uh, I'm upkeeping Lamentation, and I'm throwing two focus onto Malice. Uh, and then I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the Stalker. So I leave it on one focus, and I actually have the Canker Worm activate first. So the Canker Worm moves out of the way because I want my Reaper to be able to pull in uh, his light there. So... I, I had that measured out, um, and I knew it was possible, so there I'm just adjusting the model to make sure I'm not accidentally too far away. So the, or not Reaper, it's a, it's a Malice. Um, so I get Line of Sight, and um, I'm targeting the Chimera. I hit the Harpoon with a boost, and um, then I deal a pretty decent amount of damage, actually, just on the Harpoon. Um, so then I start rolling into my melees and, uh, pretty quickly I cripple the arc node out here and do a good chunk of damage. I leave it on at least a few boxes. Um, maybe, maybe it was even like, maybe it was really low. I'm not hundred percent sure. I'll have the damage boxes on the screen here. But, um, what I end up doing is I have the stalker actually walk into it to finish it off because, um, it was it was pretty low if I remember correctly. So the stalker is coming over here, and um, I make my first initial. I don't know if I charged or not for this. I think I decided not to. Um, so I roll my first initial. I hit, and I believe the first one actually just takes it right off the board. Yeah, it does. Um, so now I have the scarlock go next, and um, well, I'll give myself a second to catch up there. Perfect. Yeah, so um, the Scarlock's going to go next, and all he's going to do here is he's going to walk into that rough terrain and try to cast Mortality on the unit. Um, I, If he doesn't, it's not a huge deal. I have Venethrax to do it himself if I absolutely need to, but it would be kind of nice if I don't need to put him that far up, and I do unfortunately miss, so... Not a big deal, um, Venethrax can do it now. Uh, I needed a 10 and it was on two dice, so. Um, here I'm just moving some other models out of the way. The Slayer really doesn't need to do anything this turn. And Venethrax moves up just barely in range to get the guy who's not actually in the trench. Um, the one who's like half in, half out. And um, I think I end up boosting the mortality. I only needed like a 5 or something like that and I do get it. So that's good. I have mortality on them, and now I just need the void arc on. So we kind of um, we screw something up here. Uh, I have him do an assault charge to hit. I believe the first three that I measured there was the ones I actually went for, but I could be wrong. We'll see which ones I actually start taking off the table. Um, but uh, he's doing an assault spray here, and oh, maybe I do decide to go for the ones that can hit the jack. I it takes me a minute to decide. I know I was really back and forth between them. Um, so we'll see in a second here. And I think I hit the first one and I end up doing, I believe, enough to kill. Um, it's like not snake eyes or something kills here. So I remove the first one, I remove the second one, and then the third one actually survives. Um, I, I hit him, but then I rolled really, really low on the damage. Um, and then here's where I screwed up. I failed a charge, but I still teleport the Void Archon, uh, which was a bit of a whoops sort of sort of situation here. But um, it doesn't end up mattering because I didn't hit the third. It was it would have been legal for me to just kill the front two and teleport. And that's my turn. Retribution turn two. So I decided it's definitely feet turn. Um, it's going to be the most relevant here because all my forces are going to be engaging. And I did lose a lot of the Rizovas on the last turn, but it's roughly what I expected with uh, the amount of sprays and mortality. Um, so right here I'm just working out how I want to do this. So I end up moving the mechanic to empower the demon, uh, give him a free focus. And then I'm going to have Gorshade go, he's going to feet um, to give them the uh, stationary when they're destroyed and to get focus from them. Then right here, I'm just working out wh what I want to do uh, with the Rose of Ass. So I'm just working out charge lanes. I also believe I end up giving them um, Ghostly with Gore Shade uh, just to make their charges easier. And so right here, I'm having the Demon go first though. And I'm going to pay taking a pot shot at the Stalker. I'm going to roll the 
first one. And I end up missing the first shot. Um, hard rolling the second shot I hit, and I'll boost damage. And although Carpez protects against range rolls, since the way it's worded, it does damage after, I'm going to manage to avoid that roll. And I will end up doing a decent chunk of damage to it there. I'm then going to uh, move the Harpy up, and it's going to shoot the same Slayer. Hopefully to get in some damage, but the main thing I want to go for here is a crit knockdown with a Thunderbolt gun, just to mess up uh, the focus management on Jason's next turn. So right here, I'm going to boost a hit just for the crit. I hit, but no crit, and I push him back a little. And I roll the damage. Um, I believe I end up boosting just because I had the extra focus. And it ends up doing nothing because uh, of Carapace. So he's out of range now, so I'm going to change targets to the Scarlock Thrall um, just to kill one of his solos. I rolled a hit, um, I hit, and I managed to kill. So I'm going to go with the unit, and then I'm going to work out uh, where they want to charge and just how to keep them in command range. The goal here is to get them to tie everything up and also just take out a few key pieces. Because they also have Precision Strike, so I should be able to cripple some jacks uh, pretty well. So right here I'm charging into the Slayer, um, the Malice, and uh, Stalker. And the rest that can't charge are just going to hang back a little in the zone. So I'm going to start off with the Stalker here. I hit the first one and I end up blowing up damage and because of Precision Strike I get to choose where this goes so I believe I choose movement just to make everything easy to hit. All right here you can see me just quickly putting Aelithir up. I meant to do that before the movement just for veteran leader. Uh, so I get to take that back a little. And I get in the majority of them. Uh, now I'm rolling the damage. Um, and I do uh, quite well there. And he's taken out in about uh, two or three hits. Uh, so the other ones that were in range of Malice are going to put some hits into him. Uh, he hits. Um, and I end up doing a decent chunk of damage. I do about like seven to the four. And then uh, four to the four. Uh, I'm just looking here where I want to allocate it. And I think I end up going for Cortex first. And then right here I'm going to be rolling against the other um, Slayer I got into in the Void Archon. Um, I end up doing a chunk to the Void Archon, but not enough to take him out, and the Slayer will also eat a bit of chip. Cricks, turn three. Alright, so we realized the Vorcon mistake here, um, but we also realized it didn't really matter. So um, then I also realized another mistake I made. I didn't counter charge anything last turn, and I probably could have. Um, which was a bit of a bit of a problem, but doesn't really matter for the time being. Um, I'm gonna upkeep Lamentation, and uh, Malice can't actually power up or be allocated to because of his crippled cortex, which is a bit of a problem. Um, so uh, my Scarlet is gone, which means Venethrax needs to get Mortality out nice and early. So Venethrax is actually gonna end up being the first model to activate here. And um, he's going to throw Lamentation onto the unit, um, or not Lamentation, uh, Mortality. And he's going to boost a hit, and then I think he's just casting a couple dead weights to try and try and kill a couple models off. So I think that's what I was just rolling there. And uh, now that Venethrox is done, uh, the Void Archon got the soul, and soul collection is going to be a big deal here because I'm just trying to deny as many as possible. So... The Void Archon is going to move, and I get a really, really nice spray line with this guy. Uh, something like five or six models, I'm pretty sure, were in the uh, when the spray. Maybe it was just four. I could be uh, missing something here, but um, I, I think I think that's five. Um, but of course, these guys do have their like death uh, final strike thing. I forget what the rule is called. 
Um, so they're still going to be dealing a bunch of damage to my stuff when he does this, which is why I was careful to make sure the mechanic hadn't already went to repair malice, just in case. So, um, I start rolling these out here, and, um, it uh, looks like I actually only sprayed three of them, but I need, uh, th fours to hit, so I boost the damage on the first one to get the soul, um, and then it gets to hit me back. He ends up dealing something like three damage to the uh, Void Archon. So then I start rolling into the next one. Um, I hit, uh, I boost the damage again because they had uh, arm, buff, uh, arm buffs or something right now. So I'm pretty sure killing them was actually harder than hitting them. Um, and again, this time Venethrax actually gets the soul on the second one. Um, and then I end up missing the third one. And, oh, there was definitely a fourth, because um, I have here that I hit a fourth one, so I don't know what at this point, but um, the one that I hit the uh, on the second one tried to hit the Cankerworm and missed. The third one obviously didn't get to anything because I didn't kill it, and then the fourth one um, actually takes out Malice's right arm, um, and Malice gets the soul on that one. Um, oh, and then I do get a fifth as well. Um, and I kill that one as well, which misses Malice. So Malice is down a right arm and a cortex now, which means he definitely needs a repair. Um, and now I'm debating whether or not I want to teleport the Void Archon for an armor debuff or on the flag. Um, it's scenarios in a weird spot. I don't remember what the exact scoring was right now, but I'm pretty sure I wasn't up. So I'm deciding whether the uh the void archon should just try to help me remove as many things as possible or if i should just kind of secure that i can't lose on scenario next turn um and i actually don't remember what i go with here um but looks like i teleported him into the middle which checks out um so i end up going for the arm debuff and then i'm just gonna have the mechanic go next here he's gonna repair malice because malice really needs it now um, my main goal here, obviously, is just to get the Cortex and the right arm going, and maybe let him take another hit later. Um, but the, the big idea is just get him actually operational again. So, now I'm figuring out what I want to do. Um, I ended up repairing, I think, four damage there. Uh, the Canker Worm is what I decide is going to go next. So, I believe I just have him hit one of the members of the unit. Um... I hit with the uh, armor-piercing weapon, and I'm pretty sure I just kill him. Uh, he tries to smack back, but he ends up missing, and I'm rolling that out here right now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so Reed's about to roll his uh, his counterattack. Um, maybe? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm still rolling damage, I think. Um, yeah, no, he's rolling the, the counter, uh, the free attack now and I believe he just ends up missing here. So, I don't know what rule we're looking up at this point in time, but there we go, he's got it. Um, so, he misses, that guy dies, and um, now I have the Malice go. So, Malice is going to inch forward just a little bit so I can shoot the Daemon. Uh, I'm going to boost a hit so I can make sure I drag it, and... Uh, we'll see me roll that out in a second here. I'm boosting using the souls because they actually convert to focus at the start of my activation, not um, not at the beginning of the turn, which is really, really convenient because uh, obviously his cortex was crippled, so it allowed him to still kind of be relevant this turn. Um, so I boost to hit, and then the harpoon itself unfortunately doesn't do any damage, um, but my, uh, my melee uh, also hits my, my free melee that I get from pulling. Um, and is only based off one because of the Vorkon aura. So I end up doing something like uh, four damage there. Um, again, the damage grids will be on the screen. So from there, it's just uh, buying some damage um, and, or buying some hits to just kind of keep smacking it. Um, I do an okay amount of damage for dice off one, really not that good. Um, and I realize I probably should have held on to one of the souls so I could have done uh, possession on it. But I didn't, so that was my fault. Um, so next, uh, I think I'm still rolling out the damage here. And like I said, I do kind of mad damage for dice off one. I think I was doing like four damage most of the time. 
Um, so next I'm going to have the Slayer go, and he's going to walk into one of the Rizzo Vass as well as the Daemon. Um, and my goal here is kind of just finish off the Daemon and then maybe kill a Rizzo Vass as well. So um, I end up barely killing the thing. Again, dice were just not rolling hot. Uh, Slayer was, I believe, in the same boat where he was just dice off one on this thing. And I end up getting it with my last attack. So uh, unfortunately, I had to leave the Rizzo Vass alive, but I did manage to take out the Daemon here. And that was pretty much all I was able to do this turn. Um, so, I mean, my board state's looking really good in terms of the attrition game. I'm in a fantastic spot, and, uh, we go to Reed's turn. Retribution, turn three. So right here I can see I'm losing pretty bad on attrition, so I decide the only way to win here is to get Venny when he's exposed. Um, I realize this is pretty bad odd, but, uh, I'm, I think it's still the best odds I have at winning this game. So I'm going to move up Gorshade. I'm going to end up casting Ghostly on Aelothir. Then I'm going to have the mechanic go and empower um, the Siren to give him focus. And right here I'm just working out how I want to do the Sword of Activations because it's going to be my last move in the game. So I'm just seeing if my caster can cast any offensive spells, but uh, he's out of range of anything um, to be relevant. Uh, so I'm going to end up moving, um, end up moving with my unit first. Uh, they're going to charge. They're just going, one is charging Venethrax for the damage. The other one is just charging out of the way. Um, the Slayer counter charges. We don't really resolve it because it's not going to affect the outcome here. Um, and I end up getting really lucky and I end up hitting Venethrax here. And I just blow up the damage. Um, which makes me feel a lot more comfortable about sending Illith in here, even though it's um, low odds to hit, at least I can have the Siren as a possible backup. So now I'm going to charge with Illith here, here. It's like a, I think, a 7 to hit or something like that. And I end up uh, hitting this one too. And I just blow up the damage. And uh, that's going to be game. Um, and there you have it. That was Four Shade versus Venethrax. Uh, some crazy luck there on that on that end assassination, but also super preventable on my end if I'd moved him literally like half an inch back or camped one focus, wouldn't have even been a problem. So uh, definitely well played to my opponent for catching that and uh, being able to turn that game around. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Things have been going really, really well with the channel and I'm super happy with the way everything's been going and I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content. So until next time, peace.